counting down to the millennium, increasing security in the wake of terror concerns, especially in New York City. We're going to have 19,000 police officers out. Well, I think we've planned for every contingency. Also a concern, preventing Y2K computer glitches. The Russian offensive in Chechnya, civilians in harm's way as the rebels hide among them. Chechen fighters which are in Grozny will have nowhere to retreat. The continuing standoff aboard an Indian Airlines jet hijacked on Friday. And the last full day in space for Seven sent to save the Hubble telescope. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News, reported by John Siegenthaler. Good evening, everyone. We begin tonight with the countdown to the new millennium, now just six days away. The concern, not just a computer glitch, but terrorism. In the past week, the government has urged Americans planning to attend large New Year's events to be extra careful. Now details are emerging about how law enforcement agencies are stepping up security at the biggest events. NBC's Campbell Brown reports. New York's Times Square, Washington, D.C.'s Lincoln Memorial, and Seattle Space Needle each to be the site of huge millennium celebrations, each taking extraordinary security measures. In New York, a mile-long, three-block-wide area around Times Square will be closed to traffic. All parked cars will be towed, all manhole covers sealed. And inside, what they're calling the Times Square frozen zone for the millennium, more than 7,000 officers on patrol. We have no specific information that anything is going to happen. We've been preparing for this for three years. In Seattle, the city plans to erect a fence around the base of the Space Needle. The estimated 60,000 people expected here on New Year's Eve will have to pass through a security checkpoint. The celebration on the mall in the nation's capital, expected to draw half a million people, will be patrolled by more than 3,500 local police, plus federal law enforcement officers and the National Guard. While authorities maintain there have been no specific threats against U.S. targets, the manhunt is still on tonight for an associate of Ahmed Rassam, the man arrested at the Canadian border earlier this month. In his car, explosives and sophisticated timers. Rassam was captured aboard a ferry, apparently on his way to Seattle. Abdelmaji Dahuman is believed to have been traveling with him, but managed to escape. This weekend, the FBI interviewed Horizon Air ticket agents at the Bellingham Airport, 90 miles north of Seattle. Investigators have reportedly been told by one of the agents that a ticket was sold to someone who fit Dahuman's description. Rassam, now being held at this facility in Seattle, is said to have ties to Islamic militants in Algeria. Security remains especially tight at border crossings, and today at airports around the country, police were patrolling with bomb-sniffing dogs, searching bags and packages. Terrorism experts are urging the public to take these threats seriously, but not to panic. You don't want to turn this country into uh, a, a group of paranoids in which everybody's suspicious of one another all the time. It's a tough line to walk. Local and federal law enforcement officers preparing to prevent the worst and hoping for the best. Campbell Brown, NBC News, Washington. Now to the Y2K computer concerns and the fear that older computers programmed to read just the last two digits of a year will read double zero as 1900 and stop working. Billions of dollars have been spent to correct the problem. The man leading that effort in this country is John Koskinen, the chairman of the President's Council on Y2K Conversion. Mr. Koskinen, good evening. Good evening. Do you see any problems on the horizon, computer problems, that could cause a major impact on America? Uh, we do not. We think that the uh, basic national infrastructure is going to function effectively as we move into the next century. We are continuing to be focused on potential local problems, but they'll be uh, confined to a handful of local areas. They won't be regional and they won't be national. Where will you be for the new year and, and how good a handle will you have on any potential problems? Well, we've created an information coordination center a block and a half from the White House, which will collect information from around the world, around the entire economy, from state and local government and the federal governments, and we'll spend uh, the entire weekend there on a round-the-clock basis, and I think we'll have a very good handle. 
on uh, what's happening not only here but around the world. So to go through the laundry list, power plants, air traffic control, prisons, banking, the military, you say they're all Y2K compliant? They're all Y2K compliant, but we keep reminding everybody they're going to be glitches places just as there are glitches uh, every day. But we think that in terms of any significant disruptions, we don't see any evidence that we'll see any of those. Mr. Koskinen, this country may be ready, but there are concerns about other countries. Tell us uh, what you know. Well, we are concerned and have been for some time about developing countries. The developed countries we trade primarily with are in very good shape. Uh, but some countries with enough information technology to make a difference to them, like Russia and China, Indonesia and other countries, started late, had major challenges, and it's unclear whether they're going to have been able to get all of that work done before the end of the year. Do you have any recommendations for Americans on uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day? Uh, we don't think there's any reason to disrupt your normal pattern of living. You ought to celebrate the millennium. We've encouraged people to be prepared for a long three-day midwinter weekend and have flashlights and batteries and uh, food and water for the weekend. Uh, not so much uh, only for Y2K, but if you end up in a snowstorm or a blizzard someplace, you'll be better off. White House Y2K advisor John Koskinen, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. Now A scientist, not a world leader or an inventor, was named today by Time magazine as the person of the century. It is Albert Einstein, the absent-minded professor whose theories laid the groundwork for 20th century technologies, from space travel to television to atomic power. The man who made the final decision spoke about it today on NBC's Meet the Press. It was a century with a lot of themes, the triumph of freedom, the triumph of individual liberties, but the biggest theme was the awesome advances in science and the technology that came from that. And there's one person who was the great genius in unlocking the mysteries of the atom and the universe and leading to all this technology, Albert Einstein. This week, a special series, The Truth About Y2K. You've heard the rumors. What about your money, travel, national security, a family survival guide, NBC Nightly News this week. High anxiety for the first time ever, round the clock terror alert at the CIA in New York, how to protect America's biggest party in Times Square. In depth tonight, fears about domestic terror, an FBI report on what to expect, the worst case scenarios. And our series, Images of the Year, a look back at the compelling moments of 99. Tonight, that stunning rescue above an Atlanta inferno. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. So far, that extraordinary terrorist alert across America is just that, an alert. From the highest reaches of official Washington to the most remote border crossing, and while authorities are taking no chances, there is no additional hard evidence of a planned attack. In fact, the arrest overnight of five people, suspicious people, at the Canadian border with Washington State turned out to be a routine immigration case, not related to terrorism. Nonetheless, the alert does remain high. NBC's Andrea Mitchell is at the State Department tonight. At the Blaine Crossing in Washington State, a false alarm. Officials say the five people in custody suspected only of routine alien smuggling, nothing more. We have seen any, nothing that really indicates there's any terrorist uh, involvement in it, but to, to be safe, we are running uh, record checks with various agencies. U.S. borders north and south on hair trigger alert this week. A big strain on patience and manpower. We're looking closer at cars and vehicles and containers and luggage. We're talking to people a little longer. We're looking at cars more thoroughly. So far, only blind leads. Reports that this man, Abdul Majid Dahuman, wanted as a possible accomplice in an alleged bomb plot, was spotted in Las Vegas, false, says the FBI. In fact, the FBI says there is no credible evidence indicating any person suspected of terrorism has traveled to Las Vegas in recent weeks. He remains a fugitive, a big concern. A committed terrorist could get through our security, no matter how tight it is. It just depends at what point it becomes a deterrence and they choose a softer spot or another location. So in Seattle, not far from where one suspect was arrested two weeks ago, extraordinary precautions. The National Guard called out less than a month ago to control trade riots, today ordered to stand by again for New Year's Eve. On Wednesday, installation of fencing begins around the Seattle center. 
Thursday, police start limiting pedestrian access. Security guards check all cars. Friday, guards check all pedestrians as well. All this while the CIA begins round-the-clock monitoring at its counter-terrorism center. In fact, all this millennium publicity has produced a flurry of what intelligence officials call walk-ins. Informants coming into U.S. embassies on every continent. Literally dozens of leads that have to be checked out. So far, mostly false alarms. The lone terrorist is very difficult to identify. The lone terrorist is very difficult to stop. But they do have to get equipment. They do have to collect things. And this is only Monday with four days to go. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News at the State Department. And here in New York, authorities are getting lots of help in policing what will be the largest single gathering on New Year's Eve, the annual celebration in Times Square. Always a colossal event on the turning of a new year and with the turning of a new century, huge, even by Big Apple standards. NBC's Pat Dawson is there tonight. Pat? Tom, if predictions hold true on New Year's Eve, just these surrounding blocks will hold more people than live in any other American city except Chicago or Los Angeles. Police say just getting them in and out of here will be a huge headache. Keeping them safe is a far tougher challenge. Four days before the celebrations, a test of one small piece of New York's coming festivities. But officials here have far more serious worries. At the top of the list, safety. The police, the FBI, everyone is doing everything they can to make it as peaceful as possible. No one can offer perfect assurances. Times Square last year. More than half a million people. Officials are planning for two million to gather here Friday. How big an effort is it? Three years in the making, security preparations rival planning for the Normandy invasion. The police code name is Archangel. 19,000 cops will be on duty New Year's Eve. Nearly 8,000 in Times Square alone. A section of Midtown Manhattan nearly 75 blocks square will be closed to traffic. What we do, I believe, and I'm not going to discuss exactly what we do, is going to raise the price and raise the risk for terrorists. Manhole covers are being welded shut. Mailboxes and trash cans removed. Anything that could hide a bomb. It's got the largest police department in the country. William Bratton, New York police commissioner from 1994 to 96, is now a security consultant. He cites planning and intelligence as the only means to counter the unexpected. You control the heights, so you'll have people up in the rooftops, you'll have helicopters in the air, and the most important thing you'll have is the eyes and the ears of the police. A presence that leaves some people feeling confident about the celebration. They're going to have 8,000 police officers in this vicinity. If those guys have the courage to be out here, then why shouldn't we? But not everyone. I was here um, having a great time watching the ball drop from 1990, and I, just, I, don't, I don't think I could be here for the 2000. I'm just too nervous, too scared. Counterterrorism officials tell NBC News that the reason the federal government isn't beefing up its emergency preparations is for the event here is that they think that local officials have planned for and have the event under control. In four days, roughly two million people will be betting their right. Tom? Thanks very much, NBC's Pat Dawson tonight in Times Square. NBC News in depth tonight, our special series, Countdown 2000. Yet another huge public celebration is planned for Friday night. Another possible target for a terrorist attack. Another massive security challenge. It's the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Joining me now from the mall, where preparations for the big event are underway, NBC's Pete Williams. Pete, what's the latest there? Well, Tom, good evening. There's never been anything like it, so city officials say they have no way to predict how many thousands of people will be here on New Year's Eve for this combination celebration and show based here at the Lincoln Memorial. But it's sure to bring one kind of big turnout, the largest number of law enforcement officials on the street in Washington's history. A city accustomed to big outdoor events, from inaugurations to 4th of July fireworks, now placing an unusually high emphasis on security for New Year's Eve. Access to much of the National Mall will be tightly controlled, the only entrance is through metal detectors. Nearly 3,000 Washington police officers will be on the street, 80% of the city's force, joining scores of federal agents ready for anything. 
We have a hazmat team that can roll out on any type of chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear incident that would happen in the city. Whether it's a threat, whether it's a suspicious package that has a liquid in it or a powder of some kind. One special concern this winter, heavy clothes and long overcoats that could more easily hide weapons. Federal law enforcement command centers will be fully staffed, prepared to respond to trouble anywhere in the country. We're coordinating with all the other law enforcement agencies and watching any developments that could possibly occur out there that may be of a criminal nature or uh, uh, some sort of a terrorist activity. And where could it come from? In addition to foreign terrorists who could slip across the border, the FBI warns that the year 2000 could bring violence from extreme religious cults who think they must help start Armageddon from white supremacists looking for an excuse to start a race war, or from extreme right-wing radicals who want to attack the U.S. government, which they believe is about to declare martial law. It's a common theory in the militia movement right now, for instance, that martial law is going to be declared sometime between December 27th and January 1st or January 2nd. Some militia group websites now buzz with talk of imminent martial law, and a few even see the recent arrest of a militia group leader in Florida charged with plotting to attack electric power systems as proof the federal government has already begun to impose the feared crackdown. Investigators are so worried about this kind of paranoia that earlier this month they asked a website to stop showing this phony video that pretended to show U.S. military plans for starting New Year's Eve violence in Manhattan. I don't want anybody left on the island when the troops start moving in. But experts on militias emphasize that the real threat on New Year's probably won't come from the organized groups. Most of the militias, most of the people in the patriot movement are not violent, they're not planning any criminal activity at all. It's individuals, lone operators, that investigators most fear. That's why police nationwide have been training their officers in crowd control and why all but two states have identified local National Guard units they can call on New Year's Eve if they need extra help. So while the nation celebrates this Friday night, America's men and women who wear a badge will be on duty, hoping that a big show of force will prevent a violent start to the year 2000. Tom? Pete, those loan operators they're worried about, are they worried about them coming from abroad or from, are they homegrown? Mostly they're worried about foreign terrorists, they say, although they're certainly keeping an eye on domestic groups. And tonight, Tom, they continue to say they have no specific or credible threat of any terrorist attack on any city at any known location. So they continue to watch and be very vigilant as this weekend comes, Tom. That seems to be the word, vigilance. Thanks very yes, much, sir. NBC's Pete Williams tonight. Tomorrow night on Countdown 2000, your money and your health. How will the banking and the medical systems hold up Y2K? Tomorrow's in depth. Rumors of terror. Seattle plays it safe, shutting down a big New Year's Eve bash. Will other cities follow? In depth, the best of times for American investors, but how safe is your money when the clock hits Y2K? Wild winter weather around the globe. Fires, freak storms, high temperatures. What all this may add up to. And our series, Images of the Year, tonight, this compelling moment. Brave children crossing to safety to avoid the line of fire. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. Seattle has decided it is better to be safe than sorry. The mayor has canceled the big New Year's Eve party planned for the Space Needle, but the other daytime activities will go on as planned. Seattle, which is just beginning to recover from the violent demonstrations during the World Trade Talks, has no hard evidence of a planned terrorist attack, but the climate now is so unpredictable, city officials decided this was a prudent move. NBC's George Lewis is in Seattle tonight. One local official tells NBC News that the mayor of Seattle got cold feet about the New Year's festivities when he started adding up the potential for terrorist threats to the city. I'm concerned about the safety and public well-being of my citizens, our citizens in the city, and that's the basis for making the decision. In spite of no new threats, the decision comes as new information emerges about Ahmed Rassam, the Algerian arrested two weeks ago with bomb-making materials in his car. 
Now, federal law enforcement officials tell NBC News that those materials were far more sophisticated and powerful than originally reported, that they found a chemical called RDX used by the military in making plastic explosives. It was hidden inside a medicine bottle. Rassam is being held without bail at this federal detention center near Seattle, and so far, sources tell NBC News, he is not cooperating with investigators, not giving them any information about possible accomplices. In addition to fears about Middle Eastern terrorists, Seattle officials tell NBC News they're worried about homegrown acts of violence, like those that occurred during the recent World Trade Organization meetings here. All that caused the mayor to cancel the New Year's festivities. To the extent that terrorists want to create an atmosphere of fear and alarm, they have succeeded in Seattle. It was a big topic on Seattle Talk Radio this morning. Is the mayor a coward for doing this? He's a chicken. He is one scared man. And, and in the shadow of the Space Needle today, some people support that decision. I think it's a good idea, although some people would be disappointed. Seattle will still have a circus and a grand ball to celebrate the new millennium and crowds watching the Space Needle fireworks from a distance. Officials here hoping their scaled-down celebration goes peacefully. George Lewis, NBC News, Seattle. And while federal authorities could not guarantee Seattle there would be no terrorist attacks, NBC's Jim Kleshevsky has learned tonight that law enforcement officials around the world are rounding up just about anyone with ties to a terrorist network. Jim, what's the latest there? Tom, NBC News has learned that a worldwide roundup of suspected terrorists is underway tonight. U.S. officials report that international authorities have detained an unknown number of suspects believed involved in various stages of planning terrorist attacks against civilian targets, including Americans, in both the Europe and Middle East, but not apparently in the U.S. Sources tell NBC News the wide-scale roundup began quietly almost two weeks ago, shortly after police broke up a terrorist ring in Jordan. Members of that group reportedly have direct ties to international terrorist Osama bin Laden and are accused of plotting terrorist attacks against Americans in the Mideast. In an ongoing campaign to disrupt and harass bin Laden, international authorities have arrested more than 100 of bin Laden's followers on five continents. Now, sources report that many of those arrested in this latest roundup may never face charges, but will be held anyway until the end of Ramadan, January 7th, as a precaution. But one U.S. official tells NBC News that at least some of those arrested may prove to be significant suspects in terrorist plots against Americans abroad. Tom? NBC Jim Kleshevsky at the Pentagon tonight. Thanks. But what about your money and the immediate future? Say in 80 hours or so, will your cash and all your assets be safe and available to you when the clock strikes midnight on New Year's Eve, Y2K? We continue tonight's in-depth reporting with our special series, Countdown 2000. NBC's chief financial correspondent, Mike Jensen, joins us now from AT&T's Y2K Command Center. Mike? Tom, financial companies all over the country have set up round-the-clock command centers like this one to make sure that when the ball comes down New Year's Eve, there won't be a meltdown. One big concern, will people have access to their money? To make sure there's no cash shortage, the Federal Reserve has stashed away more than $200 billion in currency. We have 37 vaults normally around the country, and we have put in place temporarily approximately 80 secure other locations so that there is cash available at a Federal Reserve vault near you. Good news for people like Diana Bennett who's making an extra trip to the ATM. I would probably just keep out like a couple hundred dollars for a week which would just be expense money. Brian Robbins of Chase Manhattan says so far just the normal number of withdrawals and if there's a run on the bank he'll be ready for it. On average, we replenish cash and paper in those ATMs about twice a week. Uh, during the event, we're going to be looking at replenishing those up to hourly uh, at our most active locations if needed. To handle the restocking, every armored car in the country will be on duty or on call over the holiday weekend. Okay, but what about other sources of cash or payment, like credit cards? I am afraid that my credit card is going to work, and that's like my life right now. Well, relax. Almost every credit card in the country is already Y2K proof. 
Look at your expiration date. You'll see a double O or O1 or O2. And in case there are problems, an army of fixers at places like MasterCard. We'll have approximately 150 to 200 extra people uh, on each extra shift from December the 30th through January the 5th. What about company paychecks? Ravel Brickman is so worried she's taking extra money out of her savings account. So that I'll be able to pay my bills in the event that the direct deposit doesn't work for some reason. But the company that prepares paychecks for 25 million Americans says the money will go through. We've run over 150,000 test cases. As for the 12 million Social Security checks for next month, already printed. So they will be in your local post office by the end of the year for distribution on the 3rd. So what, if anything, should you do just to be on the safe side? Yeah. I'm uh, saving all my financial statements, my financial records for the last couple of years. Experts say that's a good idea. Keep a printed copy. Then they say, sit back and enjoy the celebration. Fed Governor Edward Kelly with a classic refrain. I think the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Will there be glitches? Of course, but experts are very confident that this weekend your money will be safe and available. Tom? Thanks very much, NBC's Mike Jensen tonight. I'll have more news when we come back later. I will look back at the unforgettable images of this year. What's happened to those kids who were caught in the Jewish Community Center shooting? The new millennium begins with NBC, live from around the world. Today, nightly news and Dateline. Continuing coverage on MSNBC, the global markets on CNBC, and local reports on your NBC station. Join Tom Brokaw and Katie Couric live in Times Square. The new millennium starts on NBC. Money. Wall Street red hot, a frenzy of tech stocks, a new milestone for the NASDAQ. Lifeline, flu season, hospitals overwhelmed, it's not too late to protect your family. In depth tonight, Y2K nightmare, the U.S. and Russia take extraordinary steps to prevent nuclear war. The charity season, do you really know where your money is going? A fleecing of America. And our series, Images of the Year. Tonight, a little girl abandoned by her poor and desperate family, but there is a happier ending. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening. There's never been a time quite like this one, with so many people making so much money. 1999 will go down as the year of the high-tech, high-flyers, with stock prices going from pocket change to hundreds of dollars in a heartbeat and staying there. But will this continue into the 21st century? Certainly the year is ending with a bang, not a whimper, as the NASDAQ, home to many of those new companies, closed above 4,000 today for the first time, almost doubling its value in a year. And the Dow is up as well. More tonight from NBC's chief financial correspondent, Mike Jensen. Mike? Tom, this incredible surge in tech stocks has made a lot of people rich and has made almost everyone nervous. The NASDAQ index loaded with tech stocks and internet newcomers shooting up an astonishing 84% this year alone. Investor Steve Farrow in Houston. Trains leave and it's time to get on board. Powered by stocks like Qualcomm, a company that makes parts for cellular phones. Skyrocketing from $25 in March to $656 today. Who's buying? Day traders, people like Ted Chase of Valdosta, Florida. He made $10,000 on Qualcomm. Says he prefers gambling on tech stocks to gambling at a casino. I used to drive six hours to Bloxy, Mississippi and shoot craps for every weekend. But have the tech stocks, the dot-coms, become a crapshoot? Because so many of the companies are new and untested? Because so many investors don't even know what the companies make? We asked analyst Jeffrey Schlesinger. There's more speculation than I've uh, seen in my career um, in terms of what people are willing to pay. 
Analysts warn that the new stocks can fall as fast as they rise. DrCoop.com, a health information website, shot up last summer from $10 to $45, then plunged back down to $12. Experts also say there's a kind of speculative hysteria at work, creating a bigger and bigger bubble. Will the bubble burst in the year 2000? Many experts say they do expect a major correction, a drop of 10 to 20 percent, possibly more. Tom? Thanks very much, NBC's Mike Jensen tonight. At the same time, healthcare professionals across the country are going through a checklist of all their systems, making sure they're free of any Y2K problems. But, as NBC's chief science correspondent Robert Bazell reminds us, from St. Vincent's Hospital here in New York tonight, modern medicine is so reliant on technology they won't know for sure until the clock turns and beyond. Robert? Tom, here indeed, here at St. Vincent's, which is a major trauma center, only 30 blocks south of Times Square. Tonight, they're checking and rechecking all the computers, going through emergency plans. On New Year's Eve, every manager is going to be here, along with a much larger than usual staff of doctors and nurses. Across America, worries about Y2K and healthcare. Why? Because the country's 800,000 physicians and 6,000 hospitals are so dependent on computers. There are dozens and dozens of organizations involved, hundreds of computer systems. Uh, they're all very large and complex. Uh, nobody's really in charge of, of many of these aspects. In hospitals, an astounding array of equipment these days that relies on computers, IV drips, CAT scans and other imaging devices, cardiac monitors, testing labs, and in-house pharmacies. But the health industry says it has spent $10 billion to check computer systems. Hospitals are stocked up with extra supplies, including fuel for emergency generators and water. So experts expect few life-threatening emergencies. I don't suspect that there'll be major disruptions. I think there'll be small problems that we won't see at midnight. Indeed, the biggest concern is not what might happen at midnight, but computerized bookkeeping problems that will crop up over the first weeks and months of the new year. All the red tape that makes health care such a hassle. There are normally delays with Medicare, Medicaid, confusions on billing. Uh, add the Y2K into that mix, uh, and you can anticipate uh, even more snafus than normal. Marla Bryant worries that Y2K problems will make it difficult for her to get her medications. She takes 18 pills a day for a variety of conditions. She stocked up several months' supply. My motto is, if you are prepared, you need not worry. But a new government survey finds few Americans are stockpiling much medicine in advance. Americans have used common sense. They have not overreacted. They have not panicked. Another big concern, 911 operations. A White House report last month said that while systems in big cities like Chicago are in good shape, half of the 4,300 emergency systems in the country face potential problems. In Charlotte, North Carolina, they were still testing the 911 system today. Most systems say they will be putting on extra staff New Year's Eve. I would advise citizens not to pick up their phone and just test 911 to see if it's working. So the advice from experts, not too much to worry about health emergencies on New Year's Eve itself, but over the next few months, take a good look at your bills and your records, and be patient. There's bound to be a mistake. Tom? Thanks very much, Robert Brazell tonight. And up next year, Y2K and the doomsday scenario. NBC News in depth tonight. Fail safe, working hard to make sure the missiles stay in their silos. With America and Russia having uh, thousands of nuclear weapons on hair trigger alert, there's always a danger of accidental war. America and Russia together preventing the ultimate Y2K catastrophe. A rare look inside the U.S. Nuclear Command Center tonight in depth. And images of the year, the heartbreaking story of a little girl and her mother, now a happy end. NBC News in depth tonight, a rare look at one of America's most secret military installations and the extraordinary measures underway to prevent the ultimate Y2K disaster, an accidental launch of a nuclear weapon. Tonight at Cheyenne Mountain in the Colorado Rockies, America's Nuclear Defense Command, joined by Russian officials, are getting ready for a millennium, a change of the century. NBC's Jim Kloshevsky is there tonight at the entrance to this half-mile tunnel into the mountain. Jim? Tom, tomorrow for the first time in its history, 
the American military will start giving the Russians some of its highly classified early warning missile data gathered right here at one of the most secret military facilities in the world, Cheyenne Mountain. It's a determined effort by both sides to avoid the ultimate Y2K disaster, Doomsday 2000. Deep inside Cheyenne Mountain, under 2,000 feet of solid granite, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, stands guard against a nuclear missile attack on the United States. We do our best to keep our eyes and ears open. A computer glitch here could be catastrophic, but NORAD's commander insists his forces are fully prepared for any attack of Y2K. In the last year, it's been uh, job one, so we're absolutely convinced that we're, we're ready for the rollover. Experts warn, however, that may not be the case in Russia. Since the end of the Cold War, Russian nuclear forces have deteriorated, creating huge gaps in Russia's early warning system and a frightening New Year nightmare scenario. A Y2K glitch in Russian computers sends a false alarm to Russia's early warning radar or blacks it out entirely. Fearing they may be under attack, the Russians launch their nuclear missiles. With America and Russia having uh, thousands of nuclear weapons on hair trigger alert, there's always a danger of accidental war. We're open for business. <laughs> to help prevent such a devastating miscalculation, the U.S. created the Strategic Stability Center here in Colorado, where American and Russian officers will work side by side, sharing the early warning data collected at Cheyenne Mountain. We're seeing the same picture, so that there's a lot less chance of miscalculation or misinterpretation of a common event. I'm not nervous because we've done great work, and uh, there's nothing to be uh, worried about. In all, the Pentagon has spent more than three and a half billion dollars getting all its computers and weapon systems Y2K ready. An additional 10 million went to help the Russians update their nuclear weapons computers. But the military's biggest fear, not a nuclear attack, but an enemy that might hack into NORAD computers using Y2K as a cover. That we would perhaps mistake as a Y2K glitch when in fact it was uh, some adversary uh, uh, trying to do us harm. But NORAD commanders say they're ready for that threat, too, and point out that despite any Y2K glitches, it's people, not computers, who control the nuclear weapons in both the U.S. and Russia. And they're confident an accidental nuclear launch this New Year's Eve is virtually impossible. But Pentagon officials warn that any Y2K bug could take weeks, even months, to work their way through the system. So the U.S. and Russians are already making plans to continue this information sharing well past the new year. Tom? Thanks very much, NBC. Jim Mikloszewski tonight at Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado. Up next, the fleecing of America. In the season of giving, do you know where your charity money really is going? The answer might surprise you. NBC is there for 23 hours from 20 countries with all the stories, all the stars, and all the celebrations. Join Tom Brokaw and Katie Couric live in Times Square. Start the millennium with NBC News, sponsored in part by Renaissance Hotels. You're watching KOMU-TV Channel 8, Columbia, Jefferson City, and rebroadcast on KO7SD in Rolla. Crackdown on terror. Authorities say the suspects coming in from Canada are connected. More arrests today in Brooklyn and Boston as the countdown nears. Close call. An intruder stabs former Beatle George Harrison in a bloody struggle in his mansion. In depth tonight, New York City on high alert as it prepares to host America's biggest party in Times Square. And our series, Images of the Year, tonight, they were America's champions. What's happened to the women who won the World Cup? This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw, reporting tonight from Times Square. Good evening from Times Square. The year and the 20th century are ending in this country with a national effort to head off any threat of terrorism and unfortunately with more gunshot violence. We begin tonight with the concerns about terrorism that will continue right up to and through New Year's Eve. 
There were more arrests today, more suspects were questioned. So far, it appears to be mostly preventive measures, better safe than sorry. Still, it is a wide-ranging effort, and it is paying off. NBC's Pete Williams has the latest for us tonight. An unusual nationwide sweep by federal agents starting early today in New York City to question anyone who may know about potential terrorist attacks. Federal agents also on the move today in Massachusetts, California, Texas, and Washington states. At least 50 people interrogated, eight arrested, mostly on routine immigration charges. Federal agents tell NBC News it's all based on information coming from the investigation of Ahmed Rassam, the Algerian man charged with driving into the U.S. from Canada two weeks ago with powerful explosives. In New York, agents searched the house of Abdel Ghani, accused of meeting Rassam in Seattle just before Rassam was arrested. They accused Ghani of fraudulently using a credit card to help raise money for Algerian terrorism, then trying to cover his tracks back in New York after Rassam was arrested. And in a Vermont courtroom today, authorities publicly draw a connection between Rassam and Lucia Garofalo, a woman arrested last week at the border with Canada, charged with helping Algerians enter the U.S. illegally. We have what I believe is a link uh, between Ms. Garofalo and the, uh, the matter in Seattle. In court documents, prosecutors say an Algerian man in Canada who paid for her travel and provided her a cell phone is a former roommate of Rassam's. Authorities say the two men were members of a group in Montreal called the GIA, which Canadian intelligence officials say is a violent Algerian terrorist organization. Federal agents emphasize tonight they know of no specific plans for a terrorist attack tomorrow night, and they hope today's nationwide arrests and interrogations will help prevent one. Pete Williams, NBC News, Washington. And tonight as well, the latest deadly episode of gunshot violence in this country, this time at a hotel in Tampa, Florida, that was packed with college football fans. NBC's Kerry Sanders has the latest now. The gunmen say police, a hotel employee working on the job when for unknown reasons he allegedly opened fire. In less than 20 minutes, five dead, three wounded. Police believe he knew all his victims. But he killed my daddy. He killed my daddy. Four victims killed in the hotel lobby and the pool area. Several witnesses there say they thought they heard pre-New Year's Eve firecrackers. I'm from New York City. I came down here to escape what I thought might be some craziness in the city and end up in one of the most insane situations I've ever been in. Witnesses say the gunman then ran out of the hotel, carjacked a vehicle, and then murdered the driver. Tonight, police say they have the gunman in custody, an explanation as to why still unknown. Kerry Sanders, NBC News, Miami. And back on the Y2K front, despite all of the assurances that the Y2K computer problems are under control at a cost of $100 billion in this country, a lot of Americans nonetheless are taking no chances. They're prepared to survive no matter what happens. NBC's Ann Thompson tonight on the stocking up and lying low. Tonight, the countdown begins. Outside Seattle, Erin Scott Ashley loading her car, counting up her supplies. It's just to be prepared, that's all, just in case. All day, store director Rick Smith watched consumers get Y2K ready. Batteries sell extremely well, the lamp oil, uh, generators, uh, flashlights, those type of items, anything that a person would probably want to use during a power outage. It's the same in many parts of the country, at this Home Depot in Atlanta. Flashlights. <laughs> a Dallas military surplus store. Do you have like, uh, like granola bars, those sort of no, sir, things? No. And at a Chicago water company, a steady stream of customers. I have two gallons at home, but I come pick up three more just in case. This is usually a slow time for Hinkley Springs, but not this year. Their retail business doubled, and delivery to homes and offices up 30%. We've seen them not only order the five-gallon size bottles, but also the one-gallon size. But so far, no apparent run on money. Cash Station, the Midwest's largest ATM network, reports volume down, but the average transaction amount up. We expect this to be a, a weekend uh, just like January 31st instead of December 31st. Even so, federal officials today urging Americans to have supplies on hand, ready to be self-sufficient in case there is an unexpected problem. People need to do and take whatever precautions uh, they feel 
are important for them to feel comfortable. Tonight, by one estimate, 70% of Americans buy new emergency supplies to welcome the new year. Ann Thompson, NBC News, Chicago. From the beginning, some of the most acute concerns about Y2K difficulties involved air travel, which after all is heavily reliant on computers. It's one thing to stock up on bottled water and canned food, but if something goes wrong in mid-flight, there aren't a lot of home remedies. NBC's Robert Hager joins us now from Reagan National Airport in Washington. Robert, what's the latest? Well, Tom, the government swears it's expecting no problems in this country. But millions of passengers are voting with their feet, staying away from airports like this one as the clock ticks over. And just today, the FAA confesses finding and fixing one previously undiscovered Y2K computer problem. That problem in a backup to a backup system of 20 computers nationwide that track passenger planes at cruise altitudes. The union that services the computers says could have caused trouble. Potentially it was very serious. Uh, it's possible that the controllers could have lost all of their data information and not known which plane was which. But the FAA says it would have taken a highly unusual double failure right at midnight and caused at worst a 10 second problem. FAA Administrator Jane Garvey. It is a very, very minor uh, issue. It is a potential for uh, a problem, but we, we uh, erred on the side of caution, as we have been doing all the way through this process. But the big story, that passengers are staying away. And left with empty seats, airlines suddenly canceling even more flights than normal for a holiday, tomorrow cutting 80% of regular Friday flights. Travel agents say most of their clients have been too worried to book. I would say 75%. I mean, it's, it's major. It's not, just, it's not just occasional. And it's not just my travel agency, because I'm in touch with other owners. Same exact thing. Worst potential problems overseas. Many airlines avoiding China, India, and Russia until the picture's clearer. But in the U.S., airports say they have no bugs. Manufacturers say their planes have been cleared. These are actual in-flight tests by Airbus and by Boeing. And Delta's Walter Taylor. I think the worst case scenario would be some small glitches that would cause some delays, very similar to a thunderstorm. FAA says if it has to, it can spread planes out, route them around a problem, or ground them until it's worked out, but expects none of that. We have good contingency plans uh, as a backup if there are any particular glitches, and I'm expecting the transition to be a smooth one. But in truth, no one can be certain until the key moments come. And what are those key times? Well, first, the morning. By then, midnight will have already passed in the Far East, and we'll get some idea how it's gone there. Second, 7 p.m. Eastern will be important because that's midnight Greenwich Mean Time, and that's the time that most air traffic control works off. And then third, midnight across this country. Maybe fewer than 50 flights actually in the air at that time, but millions will be watching, anxious about their own next flight. Tom? Thanks very much, NBC's Robert Hager tonight. And when we come back, ringing in the new century right here in Times Square, NBC News in depth, a massive security operation is underway. It just happens to be a fact of the modern age that you have to deal with the threat of terrorism. High alert, protecting millions in Times Square when the clock strikes midnight. That's tonight's in depth. On a special millennium dateline, the future is almost here. Homes that listen, cars that fly, and amazing medical breakthroughs. A special dateline, Friday, 8, 7 central. Tonight, 35 years of the rarest, most remarkable footage ever assembled. The National Geographic Millennium Special, tonight on MSNBC. NBC News in depth tonight, zero hour. How safe will it be when the clock strikes midnight? Right here in Times Square, this is the scene of New York New Year's festivities for more than 90 years now. Times Square is an island within an island, the center of New York City, the Big Apple. Most years, about a half million people show up, but this year, two million are expected. With a look now at the elaborate security precautions, NBC's Pat Dawson begins our in-depth coverage from high atop Times Square. Pat? Tom, when those two million people start gathering, an elaborate security plan will already be in place. The middle of Manhattan will be what security officials here call a frozen zone. The zone will extend literally 15 blocks down there to the south, everything locked down. It will also extend 10 blocks to the north, 
in all 75 square blocks of Manhattan frozen. And the two main avenues that run through Times Square, Broadway and 7th Avenue, will be completely closed to cars as of midnight tonight. Now, how many people does that affect? Well, 27,000 live in the neighborhood, 12,000 hotel rooms around here. And on a normal day, 50,000 tourists passing through Times Square. Tomorrow, best guess, 2 million. Tonight, the finishing touches for the nation's biggest millennium badge. And the first visible signs of Operation Archangel, New York's security plan now in effect. Though officials repeat, so far, no specific threat. It just happens to be a fact of the modern age that you have to deal with the threat of terrorism. 19,000 police will be on duty tomorrow night, nearly 8,000 in the Times Square area. Manhole covers welded shut, mailboxes locked up, metal trash cans removed any place that could hide a bomb. And in an area where more than 200,000 people work, a lot of offices close today. Most close tomorrow. The main focus for police, the huge crowd. The priority is to look for, for smaller incidents that could escalate into large uh, crowd control issues. Uh, I think that they need to be quick to respond and put out small fires. Crowds unfazed by talk of problems. We've always watched it on TV all these years, and I mean, it just looks like the place to be. I have come to Manhattan to experience the biggest party in the history of the world. And that party will have one more security measure tomorrow night, safety in the skies. As of 6 p.m., the FAA will be closing this area, the airspace here, for three miles around. The only thing flying up there will be six police helicopters. Tom? Thanks very much, NBC's Pat Dawson. And by the way, it is not BYOB. No alcohol allowed in Times Square tomorrow night. It's not all about security, of course. Here's a contest that comes along only every thousand years or so. The race to become the first baby of a new millennium. We continue tonight's in-depth coverage. NBC's chief science correspondent is Robert Bazell. It began with a lot of hoopla nine months ago. The ideal day to conceive the first baby of the millennium, April 9th. In some places, lots of couples seem to have tried. British Airways reports 30% more flight attendants pregnant this year. Not surprising. There are big prizes for the first British Y2K child. Realistically, in the first year, a couple could make mm, up to one and a half million dollars. In Israel, maternity wards are overflowing. Every week we have about 150 to 170 babies. Uh, this week we had more than uh, 230. But in the U.S., most hospitals report no surge in expected mothers this weekend. Your little baby in there, it's squirming around, could be the first kid born in the year 2000. One reason may be the lack of big prizes. Radio station KHMX in Houston does offer a college scholarship, but most contests here offer much smaller prizes. For many families, the glory of having a millennium baby may be offset by the tax losses. Babies born after midnight on New Year's Eve lose a $2,750 tax deduction and a $500 tax credit for 1999. But there will be a first Y2K baby. But who? That's trickier to call than you think. In the U.S. alone, every day about 11,000 children are born in 6,000 hospitals in four time zones. And time of birth can be arbitrary. Most contests rule out cesarean sections or labor induced with drugs. Eileen Sanchez never planned to have the first baby of the millennium, but now that she is due any minute, it seems like a great idea. We're just hoping for a happy and healthy baby, but of course the whole excitement of it, you know, makes me want to maybe cross my legs more. A thrilling prospect for her child, and for many others around the world, who will be claiming to be the first babies of the millennium. Robert Bazell, NBC News, New York. Back in a moment again from Times Square.